Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I am David Knight, live here in Austin, and we have live from England, Paul Joseph Watson. And we've been talking about the Bundy Ranch standoff, but there's other things, other flashpoints in the world as well, aren't there, Paul? Cover some yeah. of the uh, come, cover what's going on in the Ukraine because you've been covering that clo more closely than I have. I've been so embedded in this story, I'm, I haven't really followed the uh, latest updates that are happening there. Go ahead. Well, of course, pro-Russian Ukrainians have seized government buildings in eastern Ukraine, and basically, we've seen a mass marketing campaign on behalf of the media trying to sell World War Three. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing called Godwin's Law, which is that as soon as you compare something to the Nazis, you lose the argument. <laughs> Yet we've had Western media accusing pro-Russian protesters in eastern Ukraine of circulating a letter demanding that Ukrainian Jews be registered, obviously a chilling flashback to the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. It turns out it's completely fake. Jewish advocacy groups have said it's fake. The man whose signature appeared on the alleged letter says that it's completely fake. He never put his signature to the letter. And yet the mass media reported this yesterday as if it was gospel fact. There have been no retractions whatsoever. So they tried to portray the pro-Russian demonstrators as neo-Nazis, when in fact it was the Kiev puppet government that was installed with US help and with the aid of armed militant neo-Nazis. So completely ludicrous. They've launched another false flag hoax. It's been decimated once again. And you go back to the hypocrisy. You know, protesters occupying government buildings in Kiev is a good thing, but protesters occupying government <laughs> buildings in eastern Ukraine is a bad thing. Or protesters uh, you, confronting BLM agents who are occupying <laughs> land is a bad thing, right? So it's, exactly. a, it's wherever they want to go. Very selective, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But again, you know, using force against protesters in Kiev, that's a bad thing. But using force against protesters in eastern Ukraine is a good thing. And, you know, the U.S. nearly bombed Syria because the Assad government was using tanks, fighter jets and artillery against civilians. Uh, but that's exactly what Ukraine started to do this week. And they killed numerous protesters in the process. But again, the media said it was a a sober, necessary act. So rampant hypocrisy once again. And it annoys me that whenever I read BBC or CNN, they constantly invoke, quote, Russian propaganda, as if Russia is the only country in the world that engages in propaganda. You know, the official US ban <laughs> on domestic propaganda, they ended that in June of last year. They openly yes. said we're going to propagandize to our own citizens. So yeah. why do we never hear about American propaganda or NATO propaganda? You know, the, the mainstream media, do they want to insult the intelligence of their viewers to such a degree by pretending that only the Russians do propaganda? Oh, we've heard a lot of propaganda this week, haven't we, Paul? And that's what we've just been talking about is how they've been propagandizing and trying to spin this narrative and spin what happened. I think it's very important what Alex Jones said earlier. He said, when they try something, we're going to be there. And we can't always be there with InfoWars. We were this time. But there are going to be people who are going to be there with their cameras with their iPhones and they're going to be streaming stuff up no matter what they try and we have seen this over and over again and that's one of the things I think was motivating people was to see this mindless propaganda to see the police state and the brutality that's happening typically in the cities typically against minorities and nothing happening about it and that's essentially people have to understand that's the broader principle don't they Paul exactly and people need to understand that we can win I mean before the yes. Bundy standoff Everybody was predicting, oh, what's the point? The BLM are just going to do what they want to do anyway. Well, no, they lost and we won. A major turning point in the liberty movement. And again, as he said, you know, when injustice becomes law, rebellion becomes duty. We saw that last weekend. The feds are scared about it. They're, they're scared of these, quote, flash mobs that can activate and organize 
uh, within 24 hours, basically, and That's it's right. a major threat to them. Paul Joseph Watson from England, thank you for joining us. Thank you for breaking down the recent developments in the Ukraine. We're going to be back with more news, and we're going to take your calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com a chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. All right, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Uh, we were just talking to Paul Joseph Watson about what's going on in the Ukraine. We're going to be covering some other news here as well. But before we move on from the Nevada Ranch stand down, because there's a lot of pushback here about who the aggressors are, who the terrorists are, who's breaking the law. This is a discussion we need to have. It's about much broader principles, much broader issues. We cannot allow them to divide us down by demographic sectors, pitting one group against another, whether it's about religion or about race or about economic status or about the city versus the country, whatever. We've got to break down that kind of manipulation from the government and from the media, and we need to understand what the broader principles are that are involved here. Now, one person who really does understand that, that's uh, been talking out about that a lot, is Andrew Napolitano, Judge Napolitano. And he had this to say on Fox News. Play this clip. We've seen some heavy-handed tactics, you know, in fact, in terms of these raids, and then we've seen it, you know, at a more broad level in terms of the IRS, the DOJ going after reporters, the NSA spying on us. I mean, it's starting to get the idea. Big government Megan? run amok <laughs> in the eyes of many. It is. It is the federal government thinking it is immune from the laws of the land, the laws of civility that govern the rest of us. Even 
basic constitutional principles. There's a vast disconnect, not only between the federal government and people like Mr. Bundy. Remember, the government is the servant, not the master. That's in the Constitution of the Declaration of Independence. That's not a political statement. That's a value judgment in the American system. But That's the right. That's exactly believes, it. Look, it. He nailed it exactly. And let me read you this, some of the statements that were made by a federal judge in Nevada last summer. And this is a case that's been going on very similar to Mr. Bundy's case. It's been going on, started in 1993, just like Mr. Bundy's case. And these are some of the things that he added. Now, this is the, um, a case with a, uh, this is Judge Robert C. Jones, and it was the Hagee case, or Hagee case. It's H-A-G-E. I'm not sure exactly how they pronounce that. But he said this. He said, in the present case, the government's actions over the past two decades shock the conscience of the court. He said the government may not abuse its discretion in refusing to renew or in revoking a grazing privilege. This is a federal judge speaking last summer. He, said, he went on to say, the government has abused its discretion in the present case through a series of actions designed to strip the estate, the Hagee estate, because this fellow had, had uh, died, of its grazing permits and ultimately to strip defendants of their ability to use their water rights. So you understand that what he's talking about is a government that is out of control, a government that is stripping people of their property rights when it is not in their authority to do so. Their grazing rights, their water rights, that is what they were talking about. The Bundy family never said they owned the land. That's one of the simplest lies to dispel here. And as I mentioned before, in many places you will buy property for your home and the mineral rights will not convey. And of course, there was a big fight about the mineral rights. We have pointed this out. We pointed it, broke the story last week, last Friday, that Harry Reid was very much involved in surface rights and solar rights and mineral rights. And there's been research around there to get uh, gold and platinum as well as, as uh, oil, but it was the mitigation rights so that they could go forward with these solar projects. It was sweetheart deals for the Chinese energy company, ENN. Harry Reid was involved in that. It was Harry Reid and his son who brokered a deal for that same Chinese energy company. And this is a done deal. Gave them 9,000 acres. Now, if you don't live in the country, you can't even imagine how big 9,000 acres is. Sold it to them for 10 cents on the dollar. 10 cents on the dollar. At the same time, they're telling the Bundy family and all the rest of the ranchers, there were like 53 ranchers there, everyone's been driven out by these tactics. They reduced the size of their business by 90%. If you have a business, could you keep your business going if somebody just came in and by fiat, cut it down to 90% tomorrow? If you're living off of a wage as a worker, what if somebody were to cut your salary by 90% tomorrow? What would that do to you? Well, it's put everybody out of business. Clive and Bundy hung on. He was the only one who was able to hang on. But that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about broad things. We're talking about property rights in general. We're talking about civil liberties in general. We're talking about corrupt politicians who are doing insider trading using their sons. And he has several sons that are involved in this lobbyist group. It's not just Rory. He's even got a son-in-law. I think it's like three other sons besides him and a son-in-law involved in this law firm in Nevada that's doing sweetheart deals. And not just with the Chinese corporate capitalists. They're also doing it with other giant corporations. And they've already broken, just broke ground on another solar project for solar, but there's solar projects all over that area. And they all want to use the Bundy Ranch as a kind of carbon tax credit, as a solar mitigation area. And they're using the same tactic that they always do, environmental species, water rights, and climate change. In this case, it's a, a endangered species that they're coming after, the desert tortoise. This is Agenda 21. And you know, if Glenn Beck, had read the book that he supposedly wrote, he would have seen this as Agenda 21 from the very beginning. He would have understand, understood that this is the motivation behind what is happening. Moving people off of the land, moving people off of the farms, the ranches, of the rural areas, moving people out of the suburban areas and into 200 square foot homes in the city. We're talking about them cutting down the allotment of the Bundy family and the other ranchers down there by 90%. They wanna cut down the size of your home by 90%. You're living in a 2,000 square foot home, for example, you want, they want everybody in a 200 square foot home. 
And I would say it's a 90% reduction. Most people, if they got a single family home, it's, it's probably 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. They want you living in something that is a tenth that.